I'm Mary Tressler. I'm an editor here at O'Reilly, and I'm here today with Evan Goer, and he is the author of the YUI 3 cookbook. Thanks for joining us, Evan. Oh, thanks, Mary. I appreciate it. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about YUI. Um, obviously, you wrote the book. Um, so I'd love for you to explain to folks that might not be all that um, familiar with it what it is and how people are using it, how developers are using it, what kind of uh, problems is it solving for for developers? Right. Um, so there are, of course, lots and lots of libraries and frameworks out there. And I think the most accurate way to describe YUI is a it's a toolkit. Um, okay. It's essentially a you know a box of tools that you can use to construct a custom library to help you do JavaScript development. Um, YUI includes a module system. In fact, it was uh, the very first uh, major uh, toolkit to uh, ship with a built-in working module system. And what it allows you to do is pick and choose functionality, load it into a page, and take just the pieces you need to get your page to work. Uh, so uh, just as one example, if you need to load uh, functionality for um, uh, you know, for uh, parsing JSON, mm -hmm. um, but not um, uh, stringifying JSON, you can do that. You can load just that little piece, and um, that helps you uh, construct a library that is uh, very, very tailored to your needs. So YY is an ecosystem of many, many different modules you can load. Mm -hmm. It includes uh, libraries for working with uh, the DOM, with AJAX, with events, so sort of kind of like okay. core, you know, core DOM manipulation stuff. But then it goes beyond that. It provides lots of utilities, so you can sort of do, you know, it has a lot of uh, functions for uh, backfilling, you know, ECM you know, ECMA 5 mm -hmm. uh, uh, functions uh, so that you can use the same interface across you know many older browsers. Okay. Uh, it has um, models and views and 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 it, it, let me back up. It has a uh, what we call the app framework. So it has models, views, and routers. It allows you to construct you know sort of MVC or MV star oh, yeah. style applications. Uh, so there are lots of different things, and uh, it's got a widget framework, so you can build your own widgets, or you can pick a lot of off-the-shelf shelf widgets like, you know, a date picker or you know a calendar, uh, you know, a tab view mm -hmm. menus, sort of sort of your your standard set of basic widgets that you need. So there's all of that. That's all on the JavaScript side. Mm -hmm. uh, but YUI also uh, has a lot of CSS, so uh, it has some CSS style sheets you can use to style your pages, and again, those are very modular. Uh, it's got a grid system. It's got a reset system. It's got some uh, CSS around typography. And beyond that, there's a whole tool set that ships with YUI. So uh, YUI has an entirely JavaScript-based command line uh, tool set that allows you to build your JavaScript, compress your JavaScript, um, test your JavaScript, uh, and all sorts of other goodies. Um, and so all of those you can just install on the command line by doing npm install name of tool, and there you go. Okay. Very cool. Wow. It sounds like it, it offers lots of, um, lots of great features for developers. So, you know, folks may have heard of um, jQuery or some other libraries. Can you talk a little bit about what makes um, YUI unique? Why would somebody would pick that over jQuery, are they using libraries, um, multiple libraries? Where does this sort of fit in the, um, the tool chest of what the possibilities yeah, are for developers? Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's a great question. So, so jQuery is a, it is a JavaScript library that solves a particular set of problems really, really well. Okay. jQuery, I think, is very focused on you know, the DOM event, AJAX, and sort of browser harmonization. So I can do yeah. stuff with jQuery. It's going to be, uh, you know, I can, you know, create a node in a browser, and it's going to work the same way. It's going to be ver very elegant, whether I'm doing it in a very, you know, late version of Firefox or Chrome mm -hmm. or some very old version of Internet Explorer. I just have this nice API for working with the DOM or and doing AJAX and handling events. Um, 
jQuery does a few other things beyond that as well, but it kind of focuses on this core functionality. Um, so what YUI is, is YUI has those features, and they're mm -hmm. broken up into, uh, as I mentioned before, it's broken up into modules. So with YUI, you uh, load these pieces that jQuery covers, mm -hmm. uh, and you pick and choose the pieces that you want. So for example, if you have a page where you need to do DOM manipulation, but you don't need to make any AJAX calls, um, in YUI, you would say specifically, okay, well, I just want the node base module. Okay. And uh, that downloads some functionality for working with nodes. And you wouldn't have the AJAX functionality, you know, making IO calls. Uh, okay. In jQuery, jQuery is just one script. It includes, you know, everything, you know, it's batteries included. You download mm -hmm. it and you've got, you know, AJAX, you've got event facades, you've got DOM manipulation, you know, wh whether you need them or not. And I think that, uh, for a lot of users, um, mm -hmm. that's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine to load a script that includes a whole bunch of baseline functionality, and you know you don't have to use it all. Um, YOI is just much more, I would say, selective. So uh, okay. it's um, it's a larger library in than jQuery in that it includes this very big ecosystem of different modules for doing higher level, more abstract things than just DOM manipulations. If you don't need those things, then you don't need to load them. Okay. Um, if you only need a tiny pit piece, uh, then you just load those. Um, so YOI kind of caters more, yeah, I would say less to, um, you know, I think, I think jQuery is really good for people who are designers, prototypers, people who, um, you know, just want to put together a page and, and get off and run, get up and running. Why, why there's a little bit more cost because you have to understand that there's a module loader and you have to pick and choose the functionality that you want to load. Okay. So by itself, the core YUI seed file, you know, that doesn't do a whole lot. It just loads more stuff and has some utility functions. So yeah. if you're going to use YUI, you need, there's a little bit more prep work in that you have to understand how the loader works and you need to pick and choose, oh, okay, I want to do some of the similar things with that I would want to do with jQuery, so I want, I need to load the node module, and I need to load the I.O. module mm. to do AJAX, and so on and so forth. So that means that means that YOI is catering more towards sort of a, a professional engineer who's being very careful about including on the page only what they want to include and excluding what they don't care about. Um, and quite frankly, you know, either scenario can work. Like, you know, sometimes it's just not worth the time and effort to worry about all, you know, sort of, you know, dra you know, it, yeah, you pay a little performance penalty, but what the heck, I'll load some extra stuff, no big deal. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you really care and you want to be very fine-grained and you want to think carefully about what you're loading. And in that case, uh, a much more modular system like YUI, I think, is uh, a, a big asset. Okay. So I imagine there's some degree of um, difficulty in figuring out just what pieces you need. Um, to some degree, that's for, a, the, for the given job or for, for the given task at hand. That, that's, that's exactly right. I, I mean, I'll give you an example where, you know, jQuery makes it easy and, you know, why, why, you know, it looks more difficult. Um, you know, in, you know, the, the, the main paradigm for working with nodes these days is the uh, selector uh, mm -hmm. API, which, uh, you know, I, as, as far as I know, jQuery pioneered and, you know, props, props to them. So why, why has... Um, YUI and basically all other DOM manipulation kits all have a, you know, selector facade. Mm -hmm. um, and the way YUI's selector facade is implemented is if the browser is too old to actually natively support selectors, um, you know, YUI has you covered, just like jQuery has you mm -hmm. covered. You know, you can use selectors in IE6, even though IE6 doesn't support this uh, natively. So, I mean, so the key difference, and this, this kind of gives you an insight into, you know, the thinking behind YUI versus jQuery is with, uh, with YUI, you know, they factored out, you know, CSS2 selectors and CSS3 selectors. So when you want to do DOM manipulation in mm -hmm. YUI, you can use YUI, you can use CSS2 selectors. So okay. you can say, give me everything with this class name or give me everything with this ID and, you know, a few other more complicated things. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do, you know, more fancy CSS3 selectors, you actually have to load an additional module because the assumption was 
most people don't actually need CSS3 selectors to pull stuff out of the DOM. So, you know, let's just not load that extra code if you don't need it. So that's the okay. YUI thinking. jQuery's thinking is just give just give you a selector engine that w it works the same way. I mean, because mm -hmm. when you again, when you load jQuery, you get all of jQuery. So with jQuery, people will use CSC, CSS3 selectors or CSS2, and they don't have to think about whether they've loaded the right module or not. Well, with why, so so that that's kind of the difference. You know, jQuery is kind of shooting for, don't worry about it. It's all in the box. Mm -hmm. uh, it you know, it's just going to work. And and YOI is more about you know, being selective and being a little bit more like, well, if you don't need this, uh, you know, let's not load it and right. slow down the page. But on the other hand, you know, from a developer standpoint, if you don't know that, then it can be confusing. So you have to, you know, again, it's it's the it's the difference between the two libraries is, again, I think YUI is more sort of engineering focused. It's more for people who are sort of on the developer side of the spectrum rather than the designer prototyper side of the spectrum interesting yeah so you need not well you need a good deal of context going into it to understand you, you need, how you're going to use it um efficiently effectively yeah you definitely you definitely need some context mm -hmm. and that's certainly not to say that um you know designers and prototypers can't use yui really effectively or that you know sure. that people who are much more engineering can't use jquery really effectively um, but they're just coming from these i think two different worlds where um you know, YUI is trying to power these very large applications, and given that these applications are large, YUI is trying to help you slice them up into little pieces and only load the pieces that you need. Uh, so it's it's more it more plays into that mm -hmm. that sort of front end engineer mindset where you're trying to really carefully optimize how you how you do things at, at the cost of some upfront complexity. Sure, sure. So, um, I mean, can you point to um... Any examples of how people are using YUI? I mean, are there um, known applications, websites that people might be aware of that, oh, okay, that's, that's one of the tools behind. Um, I, I'm just, right. You know, I think that's always the neat part when we talk about technologies. Um, it's not about technology sometimes, right? For technology's sake, it's how people are putting them to use. Um, oh, absolutely. And making their yeah. lives, lives easier. So, um so what what can you give me a couple of examples of um, some cool uses implementations of YUI? Yep, uh, I can give you a number of examples. Um, of course, you know the I mean the the you know the most obvious example is uh, YUI is used all over Yahoo. So okay. uh, you know you know everything you know Flickr, the home page, mail. Uh, in fact, uh, today at the, the recording of this interview, uh, Yahoo just launched the new Yahoo Mail, which is completely YUI 3 based and um, has, it's very slick. It's yeah. faster. Um, a lot of the, you know, I, I would say a bunch of the features that are in YUI, for example, this, this modularity, that's very important to applications such as Flickr, such as Mail, uh, particularly Mail, that you know, are, uh, Yahoo Search, which you load a fair amount of JavaScript and do a lot of stuff, and yet have to be, high, you know, high performance. So mm -hmm. that's where that's very, uh, select the selectivity and the modularity are, are very important. Um, outside of Yahoo, there are a lot of different companies that use it. Uh, Wells Fargo uses it. Um, the um, um, there's uh, uh, the uh, ArenaNet uses it for Guild Wars. In fact, not only does ArenaNet use YUI 3 on their website, they actually use it inside the game engine itself to uh, run. Uh, so it, within within Guild Wars 2, there's a uh, there's an auction house. Uh, you know, there's a there's a way to you know buy and sell items and other sort of interface uh, aside from combat. And that stuff is uh, run off of JavaScript and off of YUI, oh, um, okay. which is pretty cool because it allows them to actually push change. I actually I talked with the developer who did it, and he had some really cool, you know, there were some really cool, you know, benefits from uh, implementing their store that way. Um, that's used by I think I mentioned Wells Fargo. There's the NFL. Uh, oh, yeah. It's used by uh, Smug Mug, which is a, you know, another great photo uh, photo site. It's used by um, Zillow, uh, which uh, I'm a big fan of Zillow. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, in a way, YY3 helped me, you know, helped me and my wife buy our house. There so, you know, that was exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a neat That's site. useful. Yeah. Um, so it's used by a lot of um, 
uh, companies uh, ar- around uh, around the world. Yeah, well, and companies that have pretty pretty high demand traffic, traffic wise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, I think YUI is, um, is 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 uh, often attractive to companies that have a lot of traffic and and have to you know think very carefully about how they construct their JavaScript apps and want to be very very picky and choosy. Um, Those are some great examples. Um, so beyond your book, um, what, um, what resources would you recommend for a developer who's new to the technology? I mean, I know there's, um, there's a conference um, specific to the technology. Um, and of course, there's a great, um, great web developer site on Yahoo for it. Um, yep. but, um, maybe you can talk a little bit about those and tell us a little bit more about, are there other, um, resources that you might recommend to folks who are, who are just coming to, uh, YUI for the first time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, YUI, uh, so the, the, the main, the main site that people would want to come into is yylibrary.com. Um, I, sh- I should mention that YUI is um, the site is separate from yahoo.com and uh, the uh, uh, um, in YY Conf of this year, uh, one of the things that YY is working towards is a governance model where more people who don't work for Yahoo are core committers. So uh, and so now, in fact, uh, YY has uh, you know non-Yahoo employees who are core committers. And so another very important resource is YY Conf. So YY Conf is a conference that happens every fall mm-hmm. and um, this it just happened in November uh, okay. and it's a great way to uh, great way to meet up and and you kind of learn more as advanced YY concepts mm-hmm. there's an excellent resource for people who are coming in from other libraries specifically jQuery called the JS Rosetta Stone that's JS Rosetta Stone dot com and what that is is it's a a uh, website that allows you to translate between YY3 and jQuery. Um, and the APIs are actually, you know, for doing core DOM manipulation and core AJAX, are actually not that far apart. So um, a lot of people who are, if, you, if you're trying to figure out YY and you know jQuery and you're just kind of stuck because it, there, there are no dollar signs and it's confusing, um, go to JS Rosetta Stone and the light bulb will go on. You'll see, oh, okay, this is just this and this is just this and you, you know, it will start to make sense. Um, so the main documentation site, yylibrary.com, which uh, you mentioned, uh, is an excellent resource. It has full API reference documentation for everything. It has uh, user guides, it's got tutorials, it's got um, a lot of stuff. There's another resource, a very important resource called YY Theater. Uh, there's a YouTube channel for YY Theater. It's also linked off of yylibrary.com. And um, YY Theater is, uh, includes uh, every video from all the YY comps, uh, a number of videos presented about YY and all sorts of other contexts. And what's really interesting about it is it's almost, it's almost sort of documentation of the birth of front-end engineering as a discipline. I mean, it's, it's an amazing, I mean, uh, they, they went back and they, they went through the archives and they sort of, dre- you know, re-encoded all the videos and put them up on YouTube so that they would be in one central place. And it, Mary, it is just like amazing. Uh, you can go back to videos that were made um, really like right around the time YY and um, Dojo and Prototype and and jQuery and all these sort of, you know, initial like open source libraries and framework came about. And it's just amazing because there are these talks from 2005, 2006, 2007, kind of that era. And you can see that this is the transition point where people are going from, yeah, JavaScript is this thing you use for rollovers and eh, whatever, right? It's just like this toy thing. And it's my, turning into, okay, we want to build complex web apps. And we've seen that people have started to do that. We've seen, you know, Gmail, which was, the, you know, I think the first, like, you know, here's an app that actually kind of works like a desktop app. Um, and that really got big mainstream exposure. And a lot of that front end, front end engineering culture, the kind of, the, the rhetoric about talking about engine, you know, JavaScript development as not as 
we're webmasters or we're you know html you know you know jockeys we're mm-hmm. front end engineers and we're bringing a discipline to javascript coding that is necessary because we're building large sophisticated applications so if if for that reason alone you know it's really interesting to look at yui theater and just kind of see the talks where people are kind of like put the the field is starting to gel and uh a lot of the people who are giving those talks are off now doing you know really exciting amazing things at you know all all different you know places so yui theater is a great resource both for you know kind of getting your the history of the discipline mm-hmm. under your belt and also learning about new and exciting things um Another big resource is the uh, would be the forums on on YY. Those are uh, the YY library. Uh, you can usually get answers pretty quickly there. And um, you know, one of my favorite resources is actually the IRC channel. So if you go to freenode.net, go to pound YY. Uh, that is uh, amazing. There's you, you know there's usually you know 80, 90, 100 people hanging out there. Uh, core developers uh, on the team. There are experienced developers who have just been around for years and they can answer your questions and you know they'll tell funny jokes and whatever right like it's just it's a great community um and uh people you can get your 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 questions answered pretty pretty fast you know you mentioned you can look back really at the evolution of yui when you think about the the time spent in making sure that that docu- documentation is available for people um that's which it's makes, one of the things. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the YY team really cares about the the, the history of the the history and the the context of of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot. They've done a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of the team people have been working on YY have been working on it for quite some time, and so or working with it for quite some time. And so they have a good sense of the history and like why they made certain decisions and which decisions they're proud of and which decisions they regret <laughs> architecturally and. Um, and uh, I think that really is very valuable because they have this kind of long-term perspective about why, you know, why the library is built this way and, you know, what, you know, what it should be evolving into. So we were talking a little bit about um, where it's been, where YUY has been in terms of the evolution of it. Um, what I'd like to, to hear from you is, um, you know, where is it going? What, um, you know, I think people initially... Um, you know, it's grown in pop, you know, in terms of the adoption of it over time. And I imagine that the uses of it have changed slightly over time, too. People yes. are finding different ways to use it. Um, what what have you observed? So what I'm seeing are, are a couple of things. Uh, the first and I think the, the, the probably the most important one for uh, the library as a whole is uh, governance. So mm-hmm. the big thing with YOI is uh historically it always had a core team of experienced paid committers uh who worked for yahoo and over time uh while they are still preserving that core team uh it's become increasingly clear that uh the uh that the library needs to be more open it needs to have more people involved in uh more people who are committers, more people involved in governance. Um, so if uh, if uh, you go to YUI Theater, uh, the keynote talk uh, is by uh, Dave Glass, and he, for this is the YUI Conf 2012, uh, the keynote talk by Dave Glass, he uh, goes into uh, uh, some detail about uh, how the governance model is changing. Um, and uh, there's another talk by uh, Eric uh, Ferriulio, who uh, goes into more detail about the governance model and where YOI is going. Um, this is, I think, is really critical because, first of all, you need to have outside people, um, outside people giving, uh, giving feedback because they are actually using the library in different contexts than the team envisioned. And you just, you need that to, uh, you need that for the library to be healthy. The other thing is just opening up all, all the meetings, making sure everything's out in the open on the record. So making sure the roadmap is out in the open, making sure that all discussions are out on the open, all the planning so that there's no, there's no uh, mystery. Um, I think that for large companies, who manage open software, uh, open source software projects? It's very easy for them to just really suck at it. I mean, if you look at a lot of the, a lot of open source projects run by very large companies who I don't have to name, um, 
if you look at the open source projects, they're not really open source, right? Like they're like the code gets thrown over the wall, but you know the team is not engaged, and regular peons such as you and me don't have a whole lot of influence over the process. And I think that for a, a sort of a, a a open source project that was spawned by a company, it's very hard to kind of get out of that track and open up and say, okay, we really do need shared governance and we really do need mm -hmm. real input and real transparency. And I think that if you, if you grade, uh, if you grade YUI, uh, you know, compared to, you know, say, you know, Linux, okay, mm -hmm. well, Linux is, you know, is, is way more open uh, than, but if you grade YUI as opposed to you know, compared to uh, company owned open source projects, I think they're doing very well and they're progressing in a very positive direction. So that's something I'm really excited about and I think that's gonna be critical for YUI's uh, continued evolution. Um, on the technical side, YUI is uh, continuing to evolve, um, evolve their, uh, uh, their uh, MV, the MVC, uh, or I, I should say MV Star style application development framework, and they're also spending a lot of time on performance. So, uh, YUI objects, uh, we find that people are using YUI to create, you know, not just you know, you know, a couple dozen things, you know, a few things or a couple dozen things, but they're creating you know, thousands of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, YY really needs to be more careful about, you know, how, how can I create, you know, thous thousands of, of uh, objects that have lots and lots of rich complex behaviors and, and do that in a high performance way. And actually there are some great talks from YY Conf 2012 that go into the, the weeds of, you know, how, you know, how that can be better and how not to get, now how not to get tripped up. Um, and I would say, some of the other work is just kind of like backfilling things. So YY2, the sort of the predecessor of YY3, mm -hmm. there were a lot of popular widgets, most of which have been ported over to YY3, uh, not all. So okay. there's a little bit of cleanup there still remaining. Um, but yeah, that's basically that's basically where YY is going. It's going for you know performance. It's going for uh, cleaning up cleaning up the APIs a little bit and. Uh, and looking into, you know, how can we make, uh, you know, these sort of MV star style apps easier and easier and easier to write. Okay, great. Um, which actually made me think of, you know, are people moving from, uh, you know, the, that are working with three, were they working with two or pe do people stay with libraries? You know, different technologies have different um, adoption rates in terms of people yeah, moving up to the yeah. next version. So how does that work within YUI and, and what do you see um, happening in the developer developer community? So what I'm seeing is that projects that have, you know, strong pools of develop, you know, a strong, you know, strong pools of developers, you know, like good front engineers, mm -hmm. uh, they're able, they are able to make the switch because they have the time, they have the time and energy to do it. Like, uh, there are a number of you know, open source projects who, you know, for example, that uh, well-known open source projects that jumped on YY2 um, just to do, you know, simple DOM manipulation and the project itself wasn't necessarily a, you know, a hotbed of front-end engineering expertise, expertise, but, you know, they, they wanted YUI because mm -hmm. it helped them organize their code and they could do, you know, rollovers and maybe pop up a calendar, you know, you know, kind of do simple stuff like that. Um, so then a project where they were kind of lightly using YUI and the core expertise of the community is not, you know, JavaScript development, then they're kind of stuck because they have lots of lines of YUI2 code that's accreted over the years, um, and they're not quite sure how to convert it to YUI3, even though if they had someone who was reason, you know, had you know reasonably understood YUI3, it's actually pretty mechanical. It's act, you know, it's it's not too hard to 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 move from YUI2 to YUI3. In fact, um, I'm starting to do that for an open source project uh, right now. Um, so. Uh, it's actually you end up generating much more pleasant, much more concise uh, JavaScript. Uh, but uh, but if you're so the the projects that were able to migrate are the people. Th these are the people who were really like front end developer shops, and so those are people who when it becomes time to migrate, they have the 
the expertise and the energy and the mm -hmm. impetus to say, okay, well, this stuff is clearly better and we know how to get from point A to point B, so we just have to schedule it and do it. But projects where JavaScript was sort of a you know voodoo box for, or they don't really have committers who are really strong in JavaScript, that's where people kind of get stuck on the old library and are sort of like, Eh, it, you know, it works. So, eh, what are we gonna do? Eh, let's let's think about it next year. You know, so that's that's where that's where that comes from. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. I think um, it's it's really a fascinating technology and one that um, we're all keeping a close eye on. I appreciate your um, taking time to talk to us today. And um, thank you. And have a great day. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate it.